Good evening, my lovelies. How is everybody's evening going? Um, as today, you can see I am wearing my makeup today. Um, I decided to put on just for y'all, but I didn't want to, but uh, I'll take it off after this. <laughs> Anyways, um, like I was saying yesterday, I did upload a video on, um, two murders that happened on Halloween. So we are just going to dedicate October month to, um, unsolved Halloween murders. Um, that is what we're going to be doing because there are quite a bit of them, guys. I didn't even know that there were that many unsolved that stuff that happened on Halloween. But like I was saying in my last video, perfect time to commit the perfect crime, right? Because of the simple fact that it's Halloween, everybody's dressed up, and you're not looking out of place. You know, you're you're looking out of place if you're not dressed up. But yeah, it's the perfect time to commit the perfect crime. But I have done, you know, I have found a, um, a lot of things I did, and, um, we are going to go ahead and get into it. I know we covered, um, the Selena, uh, Sele Se Sylvia, my bad guys, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry, but it's Sylvia Salinas is the last one we covered. Okay, um, the next one we are going to go into is the murder of Anthony Seashell. Okay, guys, um, this happened in New York City in 2013, um, on Halloween night. Three men were shot to death in Brooklyn, and two others suffered non-fatal gunshot wounds in Queens. If y'all have not been to New York, um, Brooklyn, Queens, and they're one like the violent parts of New York, you know, um, they're not a bad part, it's just more violence go on there. Um, so, it didn't really surprise me when I read this that this happened there, but, um, anyways, one of the Brooklyn killings received a bit more attention than the others. It did because of the simple fact that um, Anthony Seashell, age 19, was walking on East 31st Street in the Fair, Fair Guts neighborhood when a man wearing a ski, wearing a ghost ghost face mask. Guys, I keep telling you about them ghost face masks. But anyways, he is wearing a ghost face mask, immediately recognizable by the screen movies. Um, fired upon him a bullet struck Anthony in the head and the ghost face mask perpetrator ran off I love the way <laughs> I'm not laughing at the murder cause it's sad I'm just laughing at the way they worded it they worded it like the ghost face mask perpetrator ran away why couldn't they just say the perpetrator ran away other than put ghost face in there like ghost face was really important but it is in this case because Ghostface is the one that committed this crime. If y'all don't know who Ghostface is, I'm pretty sure the whole world knows. But Ghostface is the um, perpetrator in Scream and all the Scream movies, um, the Scream series. That's where Ghostface originated from. Um, and people take people take Ghostface to the extreme. People will take Michael Myers to the extreme. People will take Chuck, and you know they take all these made up monsters and turned them into real life monsters real life monsters anyways let's continue Anthony was taken to Queens Hospital where he died despite initial media attention due to the murderer dressing as a horror movie villain there was little substantiated reporting on the case the identify the identity of the man in the screen mask has yet to be determined so to this day Ghostface hasn't been found maybe he's in the screen movies Sad, sad story. He was only age 19. He was walking, minding his own business, and all of a sudden, Ghostface decided he was going to act out a part in the spring. Nah. Nah. Ghostface, you will be found. You will be found. Yeah, buddy. Okay, let's move on to another case, guys. I said I was going to try to cover two cases in one video because they are very short summaries. Um, I haven't went in complete depth of them, and I will, but I want to... Um, give y'all a glimpse at what 
is coming on my channel. Um, this is the murder of Derek Grain. At the end of October 1980, Grain has spent two months in Bristol, England, temporarily working for the British Aeros Aeros Aerospace in the nearby Fenton. Fenton, my bad. I am so tongue tied today, guys. Though he was known to enjoy quite a few drinks, who doesn't enjoy your product? I don't. I'm not a drinker. But, you know, I got siblings about to drink. So, who don't enjoy? I mean, lots of people like to come home. They like to get them some champagne or maybe get them a beer. You know, usually champagne with women. Beer with men. Or, you know, some women drink beer. But, you know, they like to come home. They like to relax and drink. There's nothing wrong with drinking as long as you don't take it to the extreme and become an alcoholic. You know? Um, but, anyways. A few drinks when he go out of town. When he goes out of town, Derek wasn't noted for being quarrelsome or prone to participating in bar fights. The fact that on um, his fate, oh, wait a minute, that 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 made his fate all the more shocking to those who knew him. On the evening of October thirtieth, Derek went to two nightclubs. First, Vicky's, and then Curves, both of which were on the Park Street. At around 2 a.m. on October 31st, he left Curves, presumably to return to his room at the Unicorn Hotel. Oh my god, guys, there is a hotel called Unicorn. I want to go. I am obsessed with unicorns, guys. I want to go to this Unicorn Hotel. I really do. Let's continue reading. Mommy. However, he chose to, he chose to walk down... The Brandon, the Brandon Hill Lane, a move which would later perplex detectives. Whatever his intentions, Derry never returned to the hotel. Later that morning, a nurse discovered him dead in a pool of his own blood on Brandon Hill, lying face down. A sandfield traffic cone was found 240 feet, 75 meters away. Derrick had been beaten to death with his unusual murder with with an unusual murder weapon and the attacker or attackers appeared to have repeatedly kicked his body as it lie on the ground that is such a coward move spitting and kicking that's the worst thing you can ever do to somebody i mean that's a bitch move excuse my language but that is a bitch move um, and more than likely, they came at him from the back, and that's another bitch move. If you can't come to me to my face, don't come to me at all. Anyways, um, a Stanfield cone, okay. Derek having been, okay. A line on the ground, okay. The motive was believed to have been robbery. Derek's bank cards were scattered around the crime scene, and between... And between 50 and 60 have been stolen from his pockets. That's in, you know, Europe dollars. E50 and E4, you know. I don't, I'm not sure how Europe. I thought they got the same money we got. Maybe I was wrong. God, I need more educated. <laughs> I'm just joking. Anyways, um, it's possible that the murderer saw Derek drop large amounts of his cash at the club and followed him. Aside from the murder weapon, another another clue was presented in the form of a bloody footprint on the back of Derek's shirt. Lead, um, lead soon surfaced. Several witnesses came forward to describe three or four men attacking a lone victim near Clifton Hill at around 8 a.m. A red Jaguar sports car, not normally seen in the area, was also sported was also spotted to have been been round. However, the leads didn't excuse me guys didn't pan out and advances in forensics over the years haven't managed to shed any more light on the murder analysis of the traffic cone has provided little useful information in 2019 the pockets of Derek's clothes were sc was scoured in the hope of finding dna left by whoever killed him but this too proved fruitless the case has remained unsolved. So this case has also remained unsolved. And um it's a sad, sad case because this man, yeah, he was out drinking, he was out having him a good time, but it's not like he was bothering anybody. He was not bothering not one soul. And so for him for somebody for somebody to just come up behind him and attack him and beat him to death, and then on top of that, guys literally kick his body 
why he i mean what more damage do you want to do to this i mean you already killed him why are you kicking him why that is coward that's a coward for you um i don't know what to say in this case because this case has just really gotten under my skin because spitting and kicking that is a coward move coming up for somebody from the back them are all bitch moves there are three bitch moves that you know if you can't come to me face to face and if you can't do hand to hand and you got to use your feet or use some kind of weapon or something don't come at me at all you feel me but um i feel for this man and his family um maybe one day this these murders will get solved and i got hopes that they will get solved um it's just sad that they even happened. I mean, it was... What was the need of it? The, his credit cards, they didn't steal his credit cards. They didn't do... I mean, they were scattered about. All they sold was, what, 50 or $60 in cash? What is that? For a life, guys. I mean... Mommy. No, that is nothing Mommy. at all. Mommy. You know, and... Mommy. um, Mommy. It's just Mommy. wrong in all aspects. Mommy. Anyway, guys, that's my two cases for the day. I'm going to research a little bit more on some more um, unsolved Halloween murders. And um, I will see you tomorrow. Remember, always put God first. Love is love. Be kind to everybody. And stay beautiful. I'm out, guys. I love y'all. Mommy. Mommy, it's my turn to sleep.